Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Now in this short lesson we are going to look at what I like to call the rack and the anchor positions. I will show you a few positions. I want you to try to work out the best play and then afterwards I will show you the XG analysis and offer some rationale. So let us get started. Now in the first position White has a 5-4 to play. Let me first clarify the term the rack which you saw in the video title. Now this term was coined by Billy Roberti to describe the formation you currently see in White's home board. When you have the six point, the five point and the four point all made, then that is called the rack because it is a torture for your opponent to escape from. Now, of course, if Green also had the six point, the five point and the four point made, he too would have the rack. And this is the strongest three point board that you can have. Now, also, you can see next to the rack on our side of a board as white, Green has the bar point anchor made. So then, how would you choose to play 5-4 here as white? Now the correct move there you can see on the top right hand XG panel and it is 16 11 39 resulting in the bottom right situation. So you can see there the arrows on the left of the move being played and on the bottom right after the checkers have been moved. Now this position is not intuitive. You may have instead have played 13 to four, or you may have seen that you were 19 pips up in the race and made the running play of 24 to 15. You may have even have chosen to attack the blot on the one point there, but all of these would have come up as errors or even blunders. And the best play is by a clear margin, 16, 11, 13 to nine. Now, looking at the position after the move has been played there, you may ask yourself, well, why would I choose to leave two blots there for green to hit with any two or any four and even some combinations? Now, there's a few things we need to consider and they are the rack and the anchor. Now, the first thing to notice is that we have the stronger home board. We have a three point board as white, whereas green only has a one point board. Therefore, we can make slightly bolder plays. The second thing to notice is that green's bar point anchor is stripped. He only has two checkers on that point. Now this means if green is going to hit us with a two or a four, he's most likely going to leave indirect shots for us to hit back. Here in fact the only good roles for green are double two, double four, double one and four two and all of those actually do something good on the other side of the board and make inner board points for him. So here if green were to roll a hitting number he would be faced with a dilemma of whether to hit or whether to do something constructive and strengthen his own home board. Now, if Green were to roll something like a 4-3, which would be a hitting number, and he played it 7-11, 11-14, bringing that checker around the corner, then I could tell you as white, even though being on the bar, we would have a double and Green would have a take. So that just shows you how strong our position is. Now, if we played that position forward even more, green hits us with 4-3, 7-11, carries around to 14. Then we come in with 1-6, 2-6, 3-6, 4-6, and we enter, and then we hit green's blot on the bar point, which now would have been broken after the 4-3 hit. Then, if green enters on the ace point, he has to pass the cube, even with the ace point being made. And if he doesn't enter on the ace point and instead comes in on a two or three, then we are in a too good 
scenario. So here we get a maximum amount of cube efficiency here after making this bold play. We are effectively freezing the anchor. Now, because green only has two checkers on the bar point, he can either choose to not hit us and therefore the anchor remains frozen or he can choose to hit us and give us a lot of counterplay and a lot of effective cube action. So here bringing two down in front of a stripped point is a strategic move, particularly when you have the rack formation. Let's now look at another position. Now here I've made a variation and white now has a 6-2 to play. Now here you can see on the top right panel that the moves are close, but by a margin, the best move comes out as 24, 22, 16, 10. Again, like we mentioned previously, we are bringing the checker down in front of a stripped point, forcing green to either freeze that point or to hit us and then get hit back where we have good cube access and a lot of return shots. Now here, of course, it's very tempting to play 24 to 16 and then just have no blots, but it's simply better here with the rack being made and green stripped point to play a little bolder. 24, 22, 16, 10 is simply the best play. So there we have it. You can see some themes emerging when you have the rack, when you have the anchor and you can play around with these on XG. However, there are some variations which we shall look at next. Now here I've made two adjustments to the previous position. Now on the left hand side, Green now has a three point made as well as a six point in his home board. And there it's simply better to play 24-16. Playing a checker down to a 10 point would now be much too risky with green now having a two point board. Of course, if green had the four point or the five point made in addition to the six, then it would be even better to play 24, 16 and even more of a blunder to play one down. And if green had the six point and the two point made, then the decision would be borderline. Now on the right hand position, we have adjusted white's home board so he no longer has a rack, he just has a two point board. And there you can see again, the running play is better, 24 to 16, and playing one down, 16, 10, would be an error. Not quite as bad as in the position on the left, but still a mistake. So here we need to have the ingredients of the rack formation and green's stripped anchor for this to work. Now let's look at one more position. Here white now has a 6-4 to play. Now the right move here is to bring two of the golden point 2016-2014. And this is actually called the double falcon. It was a term coined by Michi to describe two checkers moving from your home board out into the um, outfield. I should say your opponent's home board out into the outfield, as you can see here. Now, again, we can apply some of the logic from the previous positions. And now we can see green stripped point is the midpoint where he only has two checkers. Now, by stepping in front of that point, as we are doing here by breaking the golden anchor and bringing both white checkers into the outfield, we are again forcing green to break that point and giving ourselves good returns where we can capture green and contain him behind our rack formation. So here we can see again the same patterns emerging that you may recognize over the board when you play and that will help guide you towards making the right decision. Now it may look risky, of course, bringing two blots, you know, in direct range of green 
but how risky is it? Like I said before, unless green rolls a double, such as a double two or a double four here, which is only two rolls in 36, then the chances are he may not even choose to hit us. He may choose to freeze his anchor and not hit us at all. And if he does hit us, we are giving him a difficult decision and he is giving us a lot of counterplay and a lot of cube action. And that's what we want to do in backgammon. We want to give our opponent tough choices over the board. And again, like before, we can see the variation to that position. Now green has the three point made as well as a six point on the left. And now it's an error to bring two off the golden anchor. And on the right hand side, we now have a two point board rather than the rack. And now it's simply better to play 13-3. And again, it's an error. So when you have the rack, when your opponent has a stripped anchor, you can play bolder. So hopefully looking at these positions, you will have some idea of how to play these moves over the board. And I have done a video on freezing checkers, which I will add to the video description, which goes into further detail on this. But it is a common strategic idea that you see applied a lot, where you look for stripped points, you step in front of them with a blot, and you try to tempt your opponent off that anchor to break an asset and give you a lot of return shots and counterplay and potential cube access. So there we are. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to end on a shout out to all the marvellous guests I've had on my channel. Please do check out these lessons. Go into my playlist and watch these. They've given up their free time and they've shared some fantastic backgammon knowledge and experience. There really is a lot to learn from listening to these grandmasters. I am planning to get on more grandmasters in the future and other top players. If you have an idea of someone you would like to appear on the channel, maybe even yourself, then please feel free to contact me in the video description or send me an email. I will do my best to contact these people and get them on and share their valuable knowledge um, for yourself and the wider audience. So many thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. New videos every Wednesday. Happy rolling. See you next time. Bye bye.